this are this is us, the people who make magnets. But the, the presentations are of uh, 25 to 30 minutes uh, long. And please keep your microphones mute, muted during the presentation. Uh, then we have a brief time for questions and discussion. Uh, if you don't want to read them out loud, you can just type the question and I will read them for you. And we have a brief time to socializing after, uh, not recorded. So the today's talk will be given by uh, Dr. Paula Iglesias-Llanos. She's from the University of Buenos Aires and uh, is titled Refining the Jurassic Cretaceous Boundary, Integrated Bio, Magneto, and Cyclostratigraphy of the Vaca Muerta Formation, Argentina. So I'll leave Paula to share her screen and go ahead, Paula. Okay, so thank you, Florencia, for your presentation and to all of you for inviting me to participate in Magnets. The study I'd like to show you today um, is part of a big project that I've been carrying on for many years now with uh, Diego Kitzman. He is the sedimentologist and the paleomagnetist. And uh, the project is aimed at uh, establishing a more reliable chronostratigraphic uh, frame for the Mesozoic in Argentina. Uh, so it was inevitable that we would find uh, the road that uh, lead us to the Jurassic Cretaceous boundary and its controversy. You may know that the Cretaceous is the only period which doesn't have a basal GSSB. And the reason is because there is no evidence of any significant faunal turnover and or physical or chemical event whatsoever at any scale. And that is enhanced by the fact that there is for this time an increased provincialism, provincialism of the marine fauna, which hampers an easy correlation among realms, in this case between the Tethian and the Andean realms. So much that by 2007, a Jurassic Cretaceous Commission formed in order to uh, define the guidelines uh, that would be necessary to uh, determine the occurrence of the JK boundary. And they came to the conclusion or recommended the use of uh, three tools altogether, three me methodologies. One being magnetostratigraphy, because uh, magnetic polarities will never change. The other one, calpionelids, and the other, the last one, ammonites. So that by 2012, uh, they came up with this uh, scheme of the boundary, which lied between Crohn's 18R and 18N. At the base of the Calpionella alpina subzone and the lower part of the Berriacella jacobi ammonite zone. This lasted for some years until in 2016, they shifted the boundary down to subcron 19N to N at the lower boundary of the Calpionella alpina subzone and the lower half of the Berriacella jacobi ammonite zone. And these are the criteria, the three criteria that should be met nowadays all together in order to define the occurrence of the JK boundary. Uh, there's a major drawback in our opinion, and that is that uh, in order to compile this uh, GTS, geomagnetic time scale, uh, for the uh, Mesozoic, OG uh, used reference sections, which are all from the Northern Hemisphere, particularly Europe. And you may know that for this time, many of them are condensed which may mean the mixture of other, either magnetic polarities or fauna. And of course, that is no good. For that reason, we started uh, to study uh, the JK boundary in a very thick ammonite bearing uh, unit, which is called Vaca Muerta Formation. 
Vaca Muerta is a very important uh, unit uh, because it's a major oil and gas reservoir and uh, has been studied for at least the beginning of the 19th century, particularly uh, the biostratigraphy based on ammonites because it was the way to date interesting uh, levels, stratigraphic levels. So ammonites are very well developed there. So let me briefly introduce you to the Vaca Muerta formation. It is part of the Neuquén Basin located on Western Central Argentina. And the basin, like uh, all the rest that are located on the East on the Andean margin, formed during the Triassic due to the breakup of Pangaea. So by the Jurassic, this is the uh, configuration, the paleogeographical configuration that the basin achieved, uh, bounded on the west by a dissected volcanic arc, which let the ocean get in through corridors and uh, deposited more than 4,000 meters thick of sediments, mainly marine. So in this uh, paleogeographical context, uh, under a uh, thermal subsidence regime, uh, the Vaca Muerta formation deposited, spanning the Tithonian Lower Balanginia. As I said, it's, a very, it's one of the largest oil and uh, gas uh, reserves in the world uh, regarding gas second to China, I think, and uh, which is shown in orange and in green, the oil window. Um, so it's very, it has been very well studied. So now, let me see. Oh, this is something happened. Ah, here we are. Uh, so from the stratigraphic point of view, Vaca Muerta, which is depicted here in grayish colors, uh, is made up of Chithonian, Balanginian, rhythmic succession of marls and limestone. So that's mainly what it is, carbonates, with man, minor contents of shales uh, and, um, and tuffs, and uh, intruded uh, once and then by tertiary seals, but it's mainly carbonates. And they represent basinal middle ramp facies here, prograding to the west from the eastern margin. So it is mainly a carbonatic ramp. Uh, regarding ammonites, so these are the zonations that have been established for the unit. And uh, they evolved quite a lot. But uh, the main thing I'd like to say is that a very important issue is that they vary very much according to what author you choose in terms of both duration and of course they are correlation with the standard uh, zonation. And uh, particularly here in the lower Cretaceous in these two biosomes. Fortunately, I will show you at the end that we could tackle this problem and actually got rid of it. One of the criteria that the commission uh, said was uh, the need to um, work with calpionellids to establish the, the boundary. Fortunately, uh, Kitzman found four Tethian calpionellid zones and eight subzones in which calpionella alpina, fortunately is present, has been recognized because remember that it's the one which would mark the position of the boundary. We used a lot of cyclostratigraphy in our study and uh, I'm not going to go deep into it, but would like to remark the importance of the use of this uh, discipline. Uh, because uh, briefly, uh, there are certain elements which are, which are very sensitive to Milankovitch cycles. And uh, one of them is carbonates. So we are in the right environment, in the platform, and with the right element, the carbonate. And uh, thus, it is very easy to count, to see the cycles 
that these Milankovitch uh, orbital forces have, uh, have formed in terms of elementary uh, cycles modulated by precession of the axis and bundles and superbundles modulated by the eccentricity high and low eccentricity cycles. So it's very easy to count them, to see in the field and to count them. And cyclostratigraphy is absolutely important because it works as a, as a chronometer. You literally can count time with it. So after Kithman has obtained, has, uh, obtained the cyclo scales in each section, he uh, constructed a cyclo, a cyclo a composite scale for the Vaca Muerta formation. And here you can get a sense of how it works to count time uh, because uh, it is made up of 24 of these low frequency eccentricity cycles of uh, 400 uh, kilo years of duration each. So, it's easy to see how you can count time on it. Now, let's do some geotourism and uh, make some uh, stops at uh, some of the best outcrops of the Vaca Muerta formation. So we are going to uh, uh, do from north to south. And the first stop is Arroyo Loncoche. So in this and all the rest of the sections, I'm going to show on the right the log with the thickness, the position of the paleomagnetic sampling sites, the um, ammonite zones, the Andean ammonite zones, and the ammonite species that have been found in the, in the section. So Arroyo Loncoche is 270 meters thick uh, and spans eight ammonite zones, so they are here reaching well into the Cretaceous. Uh, we've placed 55 sites and processed 440 specimens. And uh, here you can see some logs, some views. Uh, you see they look very carbonatic. And here this peak shows the position of the one of these tertiary seals, which here looks in grayish colors and is rather concordant to the rest of the section. Well, here are some representative paleomagnetic behaviors, which have been found here at Longoche. But actually, they are the same, they look the same everywhere along the Vaca Muerta formation. So what I'm going to do is describe them only here and talk about the particulars of each section so that uh, I'm not that repetitive. Uh, the first thing I should mention is, of course, they are carbonates, so they are very weak. Uh, intensities are minus two, only a few of them, ampere, amperes, meters, but mostly minus four or even minus five ampere meters. So very weak. However, they show very nice behaviors so that some of them, only a few of them, show straight trajectories to the origin, uh, which we isolated using principal component analysis, in this case showing reverse, so positive inclination, and a normal negative inclination uh, polarities. Uh, however, most of them, like 70%, show these kind of behaviors uh, with curved trajectories defining red circles, in this case, with reverse polarity. So in order to calculate mean side directions, we had to use a program which combined great circles with reference directions like these ones. We used a paleomagnetic Dutch program. In this and the rest of the sections, we performed uh, field tests for the paleomagnetic stability in order to constrain the age of magnetization. In this case, we got a positive baking contact test, which belongs to the lower part of the, of the section where the tertiary seal is, the seal showing very steep inclinations 
very nice behaviors, reverse polarity. And some meters away, stratigraphically speaking, in the host rock, uh, this component can be removed at 250 degrees, so that at greater temperatures, you can find the original Jurassic component, in this case of normal polarity, so that we have a positive baked contact test. We have a positive tilt and a positive reversal test. So that we interpreted a primary origin of the magnetization, with which we constructed the corresponding magnetostratigraphic scale made up of 11 normal and 12 reverse magnetosomes. Colors are the same like in the Northern Hemisphere. Now we go to, we move to our next stop, which is to the south at Puerta Curaco. Puerta Curaco is one of the best and most important outcrops of Paca Muerta because it's very thick and it's full of ammonites and tufts. You can see views are very beautiful. So here the section is 340 meters thick and spans eight ammonite zones. So like the, uh, the other section, we are reaching the lower Cretaceous. Uh, here we placed 61 sampling sites and processed only 260 specimens because the rest are still under progress. Here we got a, re a positive reversal and a positive tilt test with improval of statistical parameters, uh, parameters with uh, application of the tectonic correction and therefore constructed a magneto scale, which comprised 11 normal, 12 normal and, two, and 12 reverse magnetosomes. So very similar to the previous one, because the time interval is the same. We also performed some rock magnetic studies uh, and thin section observations. So this is from Puerta Curaco, where you can see under the microscope the occurrence of skeletal titanomagnetite, which of course is of primary origin. We also uh, did some uh, hysteresis loops. The blue is corrected for the paramagnetic fraction, which is very important, and some IRM acquisition curves, uh, which show saturation so that in combination with the demagnetization diagrams, we interpret that the prevalence is carried by titanomagnetites, mainly by titanomagnetites. Now we move to the south, to the next stop, at Arroyo Cobunco. The sample session here is shorter, it's only 140 meters thick, and spans five ammonite zones. So we are not reaching the, the boundary here. We are sampling only the upper Jurassic. And you can see the carbonatic uh, phases uh, and the cyclostratigraphy here. It's very, very easy to observe. So here we placed 48 sites and processed 340 specimens. We got a positive tilt, a positive reversal test, out of which we constructed a magneto scale made up of four normal and three reverse magnetosomes, the long ones. Also, we uh, recognized subzones, and those are polarities uh, observed from only one site, so that we indicate the occurrence of these subzones as half column. Whenever you see half column, it's because that polarity came from a single site. Our last stop is Los Catutos. Los Catutos is uh, even shorter, so it's 90 meters thick. Uh, comprises four ammonite zones, so it's also upper Jurassic. And look at the cycles that are so nice to as, uh, to observe and so easy to count. Um, we placed 35 sites 
and processed 280 specimens here. We also got a positive tilt, tilt test, a positive reversal, and built up a magnetoscale made up of four normal and three reverse magnetosomes with a reverse subzone. So, we have our magnetoscales corresponding to each of the sample sections moving from south to north from Los Catutos to Arroyo Loncoche. What we did was a composite magnetoscale tied to the ammonite biosomes. How did we do this? We correlated the polarities tied to the ammonite zones. Let's take a look, for instance, at this reverse polarity. It comprises the passages from Aula Cofintes to Winhausen Iseras. That's the age of that reverse magnetosome. So the same uh, polarity zone is recognized here at Los Catutos, at Puerta Curaco, and in a single site at Arroyo Loncoche. So in order to construct our composite, we placed it here and we even named it as R4. So we did the same for each polarity. The problem of course is how extensive this polarity should be in the composite magneto, composite magneto scale because you may see that the extension of the same magnetosome is quite different on, in each of the sections. And it, that is because of the very different sedimentation rates. So the outcome was, okay, so what extension do we have to give R4 within the Aula Confictes, Aprox and the Winghausen Iserum uh, biosomes? So, okay, what we had to do was to convert thicknesses to time. How did we do this? Okay, so first of all, the composite is made up of 12 normal, so it's from N1 through N12, and 12 reverse polarity zones from R1 through to R12 with many sub zones. Uh, spanning more than eight ammonite zones. So again, now the next step was to convert thickness into time. In order to do this, we used cyclostratigraphy. So the biosomes, the ammonite zones that have been recognized uh, in vaca muerta formation, we added the regional, the composite, cycloscale that Kitzman defined. And thus, we could estimate duration for each of the biosomes. How did we do this? For instance, let's take a look at the first ammonite zone, Virgatofintes. Virgatofintes comprises two of these low frequency eccentricity cycles of 400 kilo years each. Times two makes Virgatofintes a duration of 800 kilo years. So that we did for every biosome. And the stages also, so that the Tithonian, according to our uh, results, uh, had a minimum duration of 5.67 million, year, million years, and the Berriasian in the Cretaceous, 5.27 million years. So now that we have our biosomes in time, we attached the magnetostratigraphic scale because we know how polarities are located or are tied to biosomes. So now our, the extension of the polarity zones now is in time. So it's the real extension of magnetosomes, right? So now we have our chronostratigraphic scheme for the Andes. Through magnetostratigraphy, we 
we correlated to the standard chronostratigraphy scheme published in the last GTS 2020. Through the uh, polarities, which have now been uh, converted to crons and subcrons, so that our R's and N's are now converted to crons. And in the case of the Vaca Muerta, uh, it comprises from cron M22 to M15. M14 here doesn't count. So from this correlation scheme, it's interesting to remark two outcomes. The first one that we could get a, a precise or a, a reliable correlation with the GTS by or through the uh, polarity zones. And this means that first of all, we have the JK boundary precisely located here at the base of the subteroceras Keneni ammonite zone and the base of the standard Jacobi zone. Uh, and the second outcome is, remember what I told you about the problem in the determination of the uh, ammonite zonations, which depended on the author you choose. Well, we tackled that problem because now we correlated both chronostratigraphic scheme through polarities and polarities are tied to biosomes. So that we have our own uh, Andean sonation, which if you want to know, looks rather different than the proposal, proposals made by the two most important biostratigraphers, who, uh, who are Riccardi and Venari. So our sonation is absolutely different from that of Venari. There is no comparison. It's a little bit similar to that of the Riccardis, but Riccardis have, has these uncertainties that we sorted out. So this is very, a uh, very nice uh, outcome that uh, we had. So again, we have this, um, I, sorry, sorry, sorry. We had this uh, very nice correlation scheme. So to conclude, we could place the Jurassic Cretaceous boundary within the Vaca Muerta formation rather reliably, combining bio, magneto, and cyclostratigraphy. The magnetosomes of the composite magneto scale were converted to time by using the composite cyclo scale so that we converted our ends at us to subcrons. M22, M22R, 2R, through cron M15R. That's the duration of the Vaca Muerta unit. We achieved a more precise correlation between the Andean and the standard sonations, which, are absolute, which is absolute, absolutely independent of what author you chose. Besides, our results suggest that the Tithonian would have lasted at least 5.67 million years, slightly more than the GTS, which puts it in 5.4, whereas the Berriasian is 5.27 million years, according to our results, slightly less than the GTS, which is also set in 5.4. And one thing I forgot to mention here because there was some slight problem here. Is, I don't know why I can't find, okay, I can't, sorry, eh? uh, this one here, this one here. Is that from the correlation between our and the GTS schemes, we can see that is very consistent except in two intervals. The first is here in the Berriasian, 
within the Sultairoceras Keneni and Zone. You see these oblique lines? And uh, we think the problem might be in the fact that Og, when compiled these uh, magnetosomes, used two absolute ages, one from the Neuquén Basin and the other from Chile, which are not really very reliable. They are interpolated. And so that may bring some uncertainties in the, within the M17 crones. But the very remarkable difference is in the base, where you can see these oblique lines. And this is because the biostratigraphers, biostratigraphers who are not very, uh, who do not agree very much on uh, the corresponding sonations, do all agree on one thing. And that is that virgatofintes and pseudolisoceras are correlatable in the standard sonations with Darwini and semiformer. They are not younger, they are not older. Would that be the case? The only polarity that we should find in these two biosomes is normal. And that is not what happens. Not only these sections I've studied, I've studied but also other ones uh, from outcrops and from uh, subsurface cores. They all begin with a very important reverse magnetosome. So that makes us, makes us interpret or have one only explanation. And that is that Bilatofites is older than they think. So we interpret that the base of Virgatofintes is or relates with the top of the Ivanotiseras Ivanotum uh, ammonite uh, standard zone and to the uh, 22R cron. Uh, so, of course, Biostratigrapher didn't like this, but now that some time has passed, we have our followers. So that's what I wanted to, to, to say. So finally, of course, we need uh, a, a lot more of uh, processing. Uh, it's, it's still under progress. Uh, we still have a lot of results to, uh, to get, and uh, hopefully we will uh, publish a nice paper. So thank you. Okay, Paula, thank you very much for this very nice talk. Uh, I will open um, the section for people to uh, start making questions. Although I do have many questions because we work in very similar things. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you have a lot of data there. Yes, we do. Impressive. Impressive. Yes, we do. And we are still processing a lot of uh, Paleomax samples. So we will, uh, we will have more results. Okay, good. Hopefully very so, soon. Um, if, if nobody is asking a question, I have a couple. Uh, so I think I, I missed something about, you said that it's, there is uh, a proposition of placing the J, the Jurassic Cretaceous boundary uh, with a reversion. I think I didn't get that really well. No, I, I didn't understand. So, so the, 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 the Jurassic Cretaceous uh, boundary. Uh, you said at the beginning that uh, there is a, 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 a reversion could be a, a, a proposal for a limit? You Maybe mean? I misunderstood. No, what I said was that it's the only uh, boundary. Okay. Panerozoic scale, which doesn't have any faunistic flora chemical okay. event to define a GSSP. Oh, so okay. there are plenty of proposals to establish the boundary in different positions. Actually, oh, okay. 
right, uh, right well in the what is now the Cretaceous. So at okay. the, there are people who want to put it in the Valanginian, which is the stage after the Berreasian, uh, the because okay. there you have an, a faunal problem, an extinction yes. actually, but here you are, you don't. So that's why this commission formed in order to say, okay, if you want to place, or if you want to say that you found the boundary, you have to meet these three criteria, Magneto, oh, okay. Ammonites, and Calpionellids. Okay, okay. And that has okay. been changing the time, of course. That's what okay. I try to, to uh, emphasize. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, I, I have another question about, th there were any difference between, because of, uh, of what I saw from your pictures, you have like two lithologies, very different, at least in the color, right? Like white beth and, and, and in some sections, not in all of them, dark beth. So there are- and the, dark, the dark beth are shales. Yeah. So, so they are shales. Did you observe uh, different paleomagnetic behaviors in no. one or the other? No. We sampled okay. everything, even the tufts. Uh, no, no, no. The, well, the tufts didn't work because they are recrystallized. Re but uh, shales and uh, marls and wax stones and pack stones and all this stuff that uh, geologists, sedimentologists uh, the, divide the limestones, uh, yes. they, are the same. they are all the same. No, okay. No, okay, so yeah, not... you don't see any difference. That's a good okay. No, 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 we don't. Okay. Okay. And um, sorry, just one more question, and I leave oh, no, you alone. I know you please have to go. leave. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I said, picture. You might have a rotation in one Wait. section, or or I just. No, These are dilations. No. Eh? These are all means like Yeah. No. Right. Some the 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 stereograms with the when mean directions. The tonic correctives. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, here, here it goes correct now. And okay. then it's very similar here. So it's ah, okay, yeah, that's very okay, that's, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, so I, I got confused for, for the we also the calculated the, the paleomagnetic poles, of course. And okay. uh except in Los Catutos, the last one, we found no rotations at all. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh well. Paula, thank you very much for 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 your talk. You're very welcome.